yeah, it's, it's not it's not too bad. So what we'll do now is work on the bottom is measure off the bottom piece and you want it approximately the same height as the other one but not quite okay when See how the top's beveled okay you want the bottom piece when right here is flush with this bottom you want the top of the bottom piece okay when it's shoved in to stop right at this line here okay and that will prevent obstruction of the uh, jets that we're going to make all around here line these guys up and then make a little bit of a line here i'm going to use the same method the corner of my workbench to uh, line this up now this isn't an exact science but we'll see how I do here not bad not bad see how it flops okay just imagine cutting into the top trying to get a decent grip like this Okay, so that's why I always cut the top out first. And of course, if you mess up the top for whatever reason, uh, there's no need to go any farther with the can. So all your fancy cut uh, jobs down here could be all wasted if you mess up the top. So that's why I like to start there. I want that the hard way myself. So I make a an incision with the knife blade. We'll uh, put that one away. Get the scissors out. Did I mention I like these scissors? I'm sure I did, but I'll mention it again. These scissors are great. They're useful. They're a nice size. There we go. Because the, the can is the same diameter the whole length, in order to put the bottom piece into the inner piece, we have to crimp the metal all around. Let's see how we did as far as uh, sizing here. All right, you see how on the bottom here, when when this is shoved in, it's gonna go up to here. The top piece will not obstruct where the jets come out. This is exactly what we want. So these two pieces are cut perfect. All right, Leatherman comes to the rescue again with the pliers. And what all you wanna do is crimp. Okay, so I basically just grab it and then twist to make a bend like this here. Okay, and I'm gonna do that all the way around. You don't wanna do it too much because you want it to fit snug, but not too uh, not too tight, not too loose, just you want it just right. So, so far what we have is we've got the, the top taken out. We've got the uh, the top part cut at the proper length the bottom piece as well and I've crimped all the way around and the reason why we do that is to fit the bottom piece up into the top and the reason why we want to do it that way not the other way around is because when the fuel uh, sits on the inside okay so when we pour the fuel in there it's gonna go to the edge so by having the uh, the top over top of the bottom instead of the other way around we don't have to worry about any fuel coming out of the seam at the top here which we don't want all right so that's why the top fits over top of the bottom and also by doing it the the, the top over top of the bottom instead of the other way is uh, we prevent leakage at the top but also we won't have any sharp edges Okay, like on the finished model here, okay, there's no sharp, there's no sharp edge here. And we don't have to worry about leakage, and it just looks better, you know. You can, uh, a lot of people, what they do is they sand this right down with a fine grit uh, sandpaper to bring it right down to the aluminum, so you have a nice silver stove and, uh, you know, we're golden. But uh, we're not so much concerned about looks right now that uh, comes later and as you can see when I start to put the bottom into the top 
I'm left with this here, so I have to be careful not to cut myself. So I'd say this is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing, because we're trying to fit two pieces of equal diameter, one inside each other, so there we go. Look at that. Huh? We'll, we'll fix the, uh, the jagged edges later. I'm going to use this middle piece as the divider that goes on the inside. The bottom here of the, the divider is going to be at the bottom rim here in the lip here and it's going to ride in under the lip at the top. Now look at this. The bottom in the top so this piece here I don't have to modify it's actually the perfect length wow not bad or needs to be shrunk down in diameter in order to fit inside the can so the way I do that is using my scissors I'm gonna cut right down and make sure it's straight what I'm gonna use is the the change in color here as a reference So there we go. So what this allows me is to overlap like this and basically make the diameter smaller so it'll fit inside the can. So all it is, I'll make some cuts like that. We'll make three like that. And then bend, bend the flap up like that. Just like that. So we get uh, one, two, three flaps, and that allows the fuel to go from the inner chamber to the outside chamber. Just like that. Okay. And what I like to do is to put it into the top part first. Okay. So where the bevel piece is right here, and at the bottom. This has to sit in underneath. I guess this is a tricky part too. Putting the top and uh, bottom pieces together is tricky, but this part is a little bit tricky as well. You could staple it. You could staple it together like that, but I don't bother. When you have the proper lengths figured out and your your can properly cut, uh, it all holds together nice. So see, okay. So I got the divider in there, and the divider is also going to prevent me from putting the pieces too far together. See, it only goes so far, and. <clears throat> For, for those who are worried maybe about uh, a can, this thing being sturdy, I took an empty uh, uh, tin can like this, or aluminum can rather, and uh, got somebody to stand on it. Okay, So you put it on a level surface, and then you put uh, someone's foot on it, Okay, and uh, we got someone that was, I don't know, 150 pounds maybe, to stand on an empty can and it wouldn't crush, as long as the can's not dented. So it can support 150 pounds, and then what we do as a joke, you know, you, you flick it with your finger, it causes a, a dent, and then the can to collapse. Yeah, it's great fun. But the point is, and the reason why I'm mentioning this is, this is plenty strong enough to hold your uh, pot uh, on top. Yeah, this is really strong. When you look inside, see there's uh, that chamber right there, right? Now, what I'm going to do before I get too uh, far ahead here, I'm going to get rid of all these sharp pieces and all you need to do for that, I like using the pliers because it's a nice rounded edge, I'll just rub it along like this here. So there's no need for any kind of glue or GB weld, epoxy, whatever, you don't need that stuff. All you need is a nice 
sharp tool. Okay, see the burrs are pretty well all gone. There's some on the inside too. I'm not too, too worried about that. I don't normally stick my fingers in there. 